With all the boats that we have at our disposal, today we've chosen a shuttle to try out. In fact, to be precise, it's an Italian long range by Azimut. Of course, we'll give you the usual tour, but with this boat, we really want to concentrate on the high quality. This is the Magellano 53, part of a series of three built by Azimut that take their name from Portuguese Ferdinand Magellan, who was the first man to circumnavigate the world. Magellan was also an explorer, which is exactly what this boat invites you to do. What are the usual reasons for cutting short your cruise? A lack of time? Transfer costs? Well, one of the solutions is a shuttle. The name derives from the way it sails, like a ship, in that the disposition doesn't change, it just keeps going. Because it's like this, it's easier to do other things when you're sailing. Travelling time can be taken up with sunbathing without too much disturbance from the waves. And you can cook, eat, read or even sleep in the cabin. Low turnover and good soundproofing make the captain's quarters a nicely quiet place to be. 56 to 57 dBA isn't much for a form of transport that boasts 1,000 horsepower. In the machine room, there are two Cummins 500 horsepower engines, 8.3 QSC, which are six inline cylinder engines that have four valves per cylinder and are electronically fuel injected. They are made by common rail and respect even the severest pollution environmental regulations. Low speeds allow lower petrol consumption, especially because the hull has been carefully studied to go at these speeds. If we look at the instruments and make some calculations, we will see that at 7.3 knots, the Magellano 53 is at its most efficient. Each engine consumes 5.7 litres per hour, which is about 1.6 litres a mile. That's a brilliant output. Remember, we are talking about the equivalent of moving a 28-ton villa filled with furniture. At this speed, you can sail for nigh on 2,000 miles without stopping. So what's the downside with a slow boat? Well, for example, if the weather changes and you have to go back into port quickly, you need to be a bit patient. However, as Azimut has thought that their ferries, shuttles, need to be just a little bit quicker, they have created the dual-mode hulls that have two functions. If you put your foot down decisively on an old-style trawler, dislocation speed can increase one, two or three knots an hour max. But look what happens on the Magellano 53. Acceleration is better than you would think from a boat like this. As speed increases, certain lines of water that are usually irrelevant begin to hold the boat up, i.e. raise it up out of the water, which lessens resistance. And look at the results, over 23 knots. Going this fast, obviously, consumption is comparable with every other planing boat. Maximum cruising speed is 18 knots, whilst the maximum declared speed of the boat is 22 knots. But if we go back to seven knots, let's look at the map to find out how much it costs to run the Magellano 53. We are in Savona, on the Ligurian coast. Imagine that we're setting off for a one-month holiday, and we were going to sail every day for three hours, average a day. We could cover 630 miles and get to the bottom of Italy. For a cruise like that, 1,000 litres of petrol corresponds to about 1,600 euros. Not much for a month on holidays for six people. When navigating long straits, you can come up against choppy seas. So how will this boat cope? The vertical bow allows the sheer length of this boat to float very snugly on the surface of the sea. So overall, length here is an advantage. 
The sharpness of the bow opens the waves, which avoids impact. And then the larger volume at the bow too means the pitch is smaller, which in turn means that the long movement along the axis sustains the bow, so it doesn't go down in the lull between one wave and the next, and is more comfortable than other boats. The Mejolano 53 is different from similar length boats because of its lovely living area at the bow. That provides a calm and secluded place when the boat is moored. The stern is very comfortable with its big spaces, and because it has a nice mobile bar with its grill, fridge, ice maker combo, the plunge board goes under the water with this hydroelectric mechanism. The upper bridge isn't too big nor excessive in its decor. A boat this length, after all, becomes very stable if the superstructures are contained and light. And here, you can have lunch, sunbathe and steer, of course. The ledges sides are higher than a tug, for example, to protect you from the waves. The high gunwale makes moving safer when you have to move around the main bridge when the sea is choppy. Below deck, there are three cabins for six guests, but you could add a fourth bed at the stern in the seamen's quarters. The living room last is perfect. Kitchen next, out the door, it's a big living space. The wheel is over on one side, so there's more space. Design is contemporary and more. In the VIP cabin, there's a wonderful addition to reinforce the explorer's theme, a trunk. The captain's quarters are in the middle of the boat. It has two wardrobes and more storage space under the bed. And remember that everything on board has its own locker. There's a big storeroom for long trips. There's even a washing machine plus space for another two guests on the left side. Everything is in sync on this boat, even for the petrol and water, coming in at 3,200 litres and 700 respectively. So you can really call it a comfy, elegant and luxuriously economical way to get about, made especially for someone like me who would never get off.